Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. We have a great show for you today. And Mark Hitchcock will be joining me here in just a minute. We're going to be talking about some issues in the news. There is a growing rift between the Biden administration and the Netanyahu administration. This is increasingly in the news, talking about just some hostility that exists between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu and the pressure that we're putting on them to stop the war in Gaza and also to enter into a two-state solution. This is a big issue that Mark and I are going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about NATO. We're going to be talking about Jordan. We're going to be talking about different things that are happening that you need to know about. We're also going to be answering some questions. Uh, we're going to be answering a question about could the Antichrist be Islamic? This is, a, this is a big deal. It's a big question that needs to be answered. We're also going to be talking about China. Could China be the 200 million man army talked about in Revelation chapter 9? We're going to be talking about the false messiahs. Jesus said false messiahs would come before he came again. And we're going to be talking about, is that true? Uh, wouldn't Israel need a more orthodox government in order to move forward with rebuilding the temple and the sacrifices? We're going to be talking about that. And also, since the U.S. is judged related to Israel, and a two-state solution, doesn't God also judge Saudi Arabia and other nations in a similar manner? So we'll be talking about things in the news and also be answering questions. Welcome to the Tipping Point Show. Mark, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, great to be with you as always. Thank you. Well, we got some big stuff to talk about here. You know, I, I keep thinking that something, you know, will kind of back off related to Israel, but it never does. It just keeps, you know, keeps ratcheting up. And there's so many different fronts on that. We, you're, you've got some articles and I've got a couple articles we're going to talk about. And I want to begin. This comes from the Jewish News Syndicate. Um, and this is from February 11th. And the headline here is disagreements over war driving Biden toward breach with Israel. And let me just read just a little bit of this. It says, disagreements over the war against Hamas are driving United States President Joe Biden toward a breach with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who he believes can no longer, and this is, quote, be influenced in private, close quote. The Washington Post reported on Sunday, citing insiders in Washington, quoting 19 senior administration officials and outside advisors. The newspaper said that Biden's mounting frustration with Netanyahu has led some White House aides to suggest that the president ramp up public criticism of the Israeli Defense Forces operation in the Gaza Strip. Now, it goes on here to talk about, you know, Biden uh, is calling Netanyahu privately some very vulgar uh, things. And, uh, and, and they're saying privately he's absolutely furious with Benjamin Netanyahu. So the, uh, we are looking, there have been several reports that we are looking at withholding armed shipments to Israel. And they are absolutely desperate for armed shipments from us to fight this war. So there's this growing tension, and the tension exists because we are asking them to do two things that they simply are not going to do. We're asking them to stop the war in Gaza, you know, to a ceasefire and to stop. And they're dedicated to, you know, uh, eradicating Hamas. The second thing we're pressuring them to do is enter into a two-state solution and to give up uh, you know, uh, the West Bank and East Jerusalem, which again, they have repeatedly said they're not going to do that. So I want to get your comments on that. The other thing I want to say is this, this, this is a broader issue. I've always thought when I was studying Bible prophecy that when the Antichrist stepped onto the world scene, it would be just like this, that there would just be this impasse between Israel and the rest of the world, and that there would be this answer man that steps on the scene. Of course, we have no idea when the Antichrist is going to show up. But I'm saying, what do you think about this situation and just the you know, world tension related to Israel? Well, it's, you're right. It's, it's kind of at the worst it's ever been. Um, you, you know, in the past, you know, 1973, you know, Richard Nixon, you know, we basically saved Israel in the Yom Kippur War, yeah. sending the arms that they needed to save them. So, yeah, I think, you know, Israel today is that burdensome stone right. <laughs> uh, that, that yeah. Zechariah talks about, you know, that, that no one that no one can lift. That you, you're, I think the word used is really good. At, there's an impasse there. And so even the United States, who's been uh, the, the closest ally and friend of Israel, um, many, many people are calling on the Congress to make all to make Israel make all kinds of concessions than to receive arms and to receive aid, which we've never placed these strings on that uh, before. And so. 
Um, you know, I, I think hopefully then the, the Senate and the House there are enough supporters of Israel there that, that some kind of aid package can be passed and that, you know, President Biden can be forced to sign that and not veto that. You know, but I think, you know, President Biden is getting all kinds of pressure from his yeah. the left flank of his party. Yeah. To to you know bring bring an end to this, how, however it takes place, whatever concessions Israel has to make. But here we have Israel right now with all of the you know the Palestinians basically in Hamas kind of cornered down there in Rafah, and when they kind of have victory in their grasp, and they're being told now right when you have victory in your grasp, you have to back off and and and, and end this. And so just militarily, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. And it is it is a terrible humanitarian crisis. No one's going to debate that. But humanitarian crises come from war. And when you start a war, there's going to be a lot of humanitarian crises from that. And Israel knows they have to get rid of Hamas. There, there can't be a two-state solution right. uh, with, with, Hamas, with Hamas. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it, it's it's um, th- what, what President Biden's asking them to do. They won't do it. And so the question then will be, will America still support Israel in the midst of this? So, you know, and we're going to talk I know, a little bit, you know, King Abdullah has just visited um, you know, the United States and you know, he's throwing his weight behind all of this. And he's actually on a he's going to go to Canada and several other nations as well, and, you know, pitching uh, pitching what he wants. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all pans out. But I think I think Netanyahu is going to stand firm in this and, and keep going because he realizes they have to. It's just an undoable situation, you know, and and, we, and the thing is, Mark, we know how it's going to end. You know, the thing about Bible right. prophecy yeah, is we, we know that ultimately the world is going to march against them. I mentioned on something I did on Monday that the special reporter for the United Nations, an employee of the United Nations, has again denounced Israel uh, and said that uh, the the uh, Jewish people who were killed on October 7th were not killed because they were Jewish, but because they were oppressors. And this is the the wor- world position related to Israel is, in spite of what Hamas did on October 7th, that they're oppressors and they have to be, uh, you know, eradicated. The, the view of, I think, most Muslims and most Arabs is the state of Israel has to be eradicated. Now, you've got an article there, too. Well, yes, I thought we'd kind of maybe move over to the King Abdullah. You know, he, he yeah. just was at the White House. Um, I know you have something on that, some things on that as well. But that was uh, really interesting, you know, because Jordan is one of the two nations before all the Abraham Accords came about that had that had peace, has peace with Israel. You know, Egypt in 1979 and then Jordan in 1994. And Jordan has the uh, jurisdiction over the Temple Mount. Now, Israel has soldiers up there, but they have jurisdiction over that. The Waqf has, you know, leadership there. So, you know, Jordan's a key player in this. They're, they're not a powerful country. They don't have a powerful military. They don't have, they don't have oil assets, but they're a, they're a key player. But I thought it was interesting. King Abdullah, he did do one thing that most others haven't done. He did, did criticize Hamas's uh, October 7th terror onslaught in southern Israel. So that, that's one thing that he did right. And I want to give him props for that. Yeah. He's one of the few Arab leaders who's done that. Yeah. But then, um, you know, it, it kind of gives on one hand and then kind of takes away on the other hand. Um, he says that, you know, there has to be a, a, a six week ceasefire. Which again, right when Israel's got victory kind of in their grasp, they have to stop. Which we we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't want a, another nation telling us how to uh, run a, a military operation. And the other thing is, and this again, this is just like on a, on, a, on a loop reel over there. They just over and over again a two state solution, but not just a two state solution, but pre sixty seven borders, which means then. Of course, you know, Israel in, in 1967 took us, uh, th- took the Sinai Peninsula. That in 1967 and 1979 was given back to, to Egypt. Uh, they took the West Bank and Gaza. That's been given to, to the Palestinians. And they took the Golan Heights, which Israel still has control over. And Israel cannot give up control of the Golan Heights. No. Anybody who's been to no. Israel, I mean, that's the high ground right there to the east and a little to the north of, yeah. of the Sea of Galilee. It's, it's a strip of land 40 miles long and 12 miles wide. In Israel, if they give back the Golan Heights, they're going to be committing national suicide. They can't give it back. And so, you know, that, that's a non-starter for Israel. And we have to remember those borders back that were established in 1948 called the Green Line really weren't the borders of nations they were just placed really there by the United Nations as just kind of placeholders. 
And Israel is not going to go back to pre-1967 borders. They may at some point in time be, be open to some kind of two-state solution. But the problem is with all of this is there was a two-state solution in 1948. <laughs> there, there were borders that were drawn and Israel accepted the two states and the Arabs did not. You know, they attacked Israel in 1948. Five right. nations came against them. That's right. And they've never accepted that. And Israel has. And so it's just it's a lot of uh, revisionist history. But, um, you know, again, I'll give props to King Abdullah for saying that, you know, that uh, the October 7th was uh, was 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 you know, was bad, was an atrocity. But again, he's going to be going around the world pushing this two state solution pre 67 borders. That's that's their their diatribe. That's their their line. And they're sticking with that. And America cannot be pushed into a place where we push Israel to, to do that because because Israel can't do that. And as long as they have the government they have now, they won't do that. Well, a couple of things. One is people need to understand if if the Palestinians become a state, a recognized state. Now, the Biden administration is saying it would, it would not be militarized. Well, Mark, any time Iran has the opportunity to pump weapons in, they're going to do it, just like they did sure. with the Gaza. So number one, but number two is if they become a state, all the Jews have to leave. They have about a half a million Jews on the West Bank, 200,000 in East Jerusalem. All those Jews have to leave. They lose their homes. Okay, that's number one. Number two, and you said it right, there was a two-state solution offered in 1948. The Jews accepted it, the Arabs didn't, and they all, surrounding nations, attacked Israel in their war for independence. The reason for the 1967 Six-Day War is they were using the West Bank, they were using East Jerusalem, they were using Gaza, and they were using the Golan Heights to attack Israel all those years. And so Israel took that ground to keep from being attacked and the Sinai Peninsula. So Israel took, them, took all that land to protect themselves. Now, what we're saying, and even after Hamas, and, and I said this, I think I said it last week on the show, but Mark, uh, there's only 5% of the Arab population in the Middle East that supports Israel being a nation. 95% want uh, Israel wiped out. And in an in a election today, Hamas, they're rock stars. See, we, we see Hamas as terrorists and thugs and all that. In the Arab world, they're rock stars. And if they're, what they're saying is, if a free election was held today in the West Bank among the Palestinians, they would elect Hamas to be their leaders. They're not the Palestinian Authority, they want Hamas. So what we're saying right now, and this, and this is how Israel hears this, the Palestinians do not want Israel there. Benjamin Netanyahu said the only difference between Hamas and Fatah and the Palestinian Authority isn't whether we should exist, they all want to get rid of us, it's just how to get rid of us, okay? That Hamas is just more in your face, you know, kill, Israel, kill the Jews. But the Palestinian Authority, they want a state, and then they want to use that statehood to get rid of Israel, to, to do what they've done before. So what we're asking them to do historically is insane. It's insane. It, and it just completely ignores October 7th. Well, they're, you know, they, they view themselves and they're viewed in the Arab world as freedom fighters, not as terrorists. That's right. You know, Israel's oppressors, their occupiers. In fact, um, King Abdullah, when he's there at the White House, referred to Israel's uh, in, in the, with, the, with the West Bank and with Gaza as a 70 year occupation. Yes. So even King Abdullah, who's the most moderate leader in the, really in the Arab world, will says it's a 70 year occupation. So they're occupiers so they can be pushed out. You know, really, when you think about this, though, the last thing the Palestinians should want is their own homeland, a two-state solution, because once they're recognized as a nation, if they do anything against Israel, then Israel can wipe them out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a nation versus a nation. <laughs> yeah. So really what they're asking for is not really uh, in their own best interest either, I don't think. Yeah, they see it that way. But, you know, now they can kind of plead this idea that we're being occupied, you know, we're, we're uh, being oppressed. Once they have their own nation, that argument goes away. Now, I didn't think about that. And, then, you know, and Israel could then, you know, because when a nation attacks another nation, then you obviously can go defeat them. So yeah, you know, they're really what they're doing. It's even it's against their own interest. But it, it just shows, again, you know, that the satanic nature of yes. all this yes. It's confused. It's chaotic. It's just it's one it's it, there's one driving driving force behind this. And that is a hatred of, of the Jewish people. And we just see it manifested in all these various ways. Well, I was at uh, Washington uh, embassy, the Jewish embassy, Israeli embassy in Washington, 
watching 45 minutes of the raw footage of October 7th, which is absolutely horrific. And the pastor sitting next to me in the middle of the video leaned over to me and said, you have to be demon possessed to do what those people are doing. And the, the, the worst barbarism, you know, you can possibly imagine. It's a demonic hatred. That's what any Semitism is. So this, the, I've got this article too about King Abdullah. And it says, uh, this is from the Jerusalem Post. It says, Biden, during his remarks, recognized the Hashemite kingdom's special role as the custodian of the holy sites in Jerusalem. King Abdullah also spoke of Jerusalem and the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound of the Temple Mount as he warned against Israel actions at that site, which is the holiest one in Judaism, the third most sacred site to Muslims. And the reason that I, I picked this article out, those particular remarks, is Israel's getting nothing. There's no concessions related to the Temple Mount. In other words, they're saying, Jordan, you're the custodian of the Temple Mount. Israel, you stay off the Temple Mount. You, you get no concessions on the Temple Mount. You get no concessions related to Gaza. Give Gaza back. Let the Palestinian Authority run it. Enter into a two-state solution. And pre-1967 boundaries, Israel gets nothing out of the deal except to be forced into a situation that empowers their enemies. That's all it is. And Hamas, if they stop now, Hamas will reconstitute. And and they're already reconstituting in the West Bank, I believe. But it's but it, that, it's just something that when you look at it, Israel gets nothing. Everybody else gets something. Israel gets nothing. And again, I want to say that I don't know when the Antichrist is going to come, but it just seems today, Mark, that if an answer man stepped on the scene with some kind of a brilliant solution, he would be lauded uh, by the world. If you if you can if you if you can crack that nut in Israel, you you would be the you would be get the Nobel Peace Prize for the next decade. Oh yeah, that's it's the it's the you know diplomatically and in world related it's the Gordian knot. You know, and he's going to come and he's going to solve that, and that is that is going to, it's going to launch him and catapult him on uh, to the world scene. You know what you mentioned though about Israel. You know, 1967 they took the West Bank, they took Gaza, they took the Temple Mount, they took they took the Sinai Peninsula. They've given all that back. You know, Egypt has the Sinai Peninsula. You know, Palestinians have West Bank and Gaza. Um, East Jerusalem is in is in Muslim hands. Again, the only thing they've kept. Is the goal as the as the Golan the the, the Golan Heights and then there but but whatever concessions they make it's never enough you know if you go back to pre sixty seven borders yeah you know, we know in, in the Char Hamas charter it's it, you know it's from the river to the sea uh, you know it's to destroy Israel so there's no it's it's not there, there's not a, a, any kind of agreement for land that can ever be reached that That's will right. be satisfactory to the other side. That's exactly because it's right. not an issue about land. It's a it's an issue of existence. The very existence of Israel is is the issue. It's not it's not an issue of how much land they have. Absolutely. Hope you're enjoying the show today. Listen, you can get the entire Tipping Point show without ads. Also, everything else we do all week long on endtimes.com for seven dollars a month. Become a subscriber. You need this information, such a critical time in human history for us to understand what is going on in light of Bible prophecy to stay encouraged and educated in these critical times. Become a subscriber for $7 a month. And this is kind of shifting gears a little bit, but you know, we've, we've been hearing a lot here recently about uh, the EU and NATO. Um, you know, uh, President Trump's made some you know, statements recently about NATO and you know, yeah. how the nations there aren't you know, contributing, contributing enough. But one of the things that's happened as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine is that Europe has been getting stronger. Uh, there's a, an article uh, that, I, that I've got here from uh, Reuters or from World News. It says, here's what to know about Sweden's bumpy road toward NATO membership. And so you, know, you have the, the EU. There's 27 nations in the EU. There are 31 nations currently in NATO and Sweden, when they're added, will be number 32. But after when when, uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine, both Finland and Sweden couldn't get to uh, couldn't get to NATO headquarters fast enough to apply for membership because, you know, Finland has a long border with with Russia. And it, what's fascinating is. For Sweden, 200 years they've ruled out seeking NATO. They've been they've been neutral. They've stayed out of all these things. But Finland was admitted last April to to, to NATO, 
Sweden was held up by Turkey because every everybody has to agree. Turkey and Hungary were both holding that up. Well, Turkey now has agreed. They believe Hungary will agree here very quickly. So Sweden will be the 32nd nation uh, to be admitted uh, to, to, to NATO. And so Europe really is getting stronger. And I know, you know, people used to hold this view and a lot of people have abandoned, but I still believe that there's going to be a reunited Roman Empire, a, a yeah. reunited, a revived yeah. Roman Empire. Because in Daniel 2, you have those empires of Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome. And then the Roman Empire, you have the historic Roman Empire, kind of Rome 1. And then Rome 2 is going to be a, a, a form of the Roman Empire ruled over by 10 leaders. I don't think that the 10 horns, there are 10 nations, but they're 10 rulers because the Antichrist is a little horn and he's an individual. So those 10 horns are also individuals who who, re, who, who kind of lead this uh, reunited Roman Empire. And we see a lot of, uh, of, of ascendancy now of Europe. There's another article put out by AP I just read yesterday. It said leaders pledge to make Europe stronger. So Germany and Poland and France have met to try to make Europe stronger in light of what's happening in Russia in their invasion to Ukraine. And obviously believing if they're able to take Ukraine, that they're going to you know, then, then move on from there. So Russia's invasion there of Ukraine has really served to us to strengthen uh, Europe and, and NATO and the EU and, and these, these different institutions that are there. And I think that's I think that's significant. My view is the Antichrist will rise out of the, the reunited Roman Empire. Again, that, that, in, that encompassed a lot of countries. It doesn't mean he just has to come from Europe, but he'll come from a, a reconstituted Roman Empire. And so I think that's significant that they're, they're becoming uh, much stronger and their, their uh, ties with one another are being cemented even further. Mark, th there is a very clear uh, emerging uh, war between the East and the West. And it's already a silent war, kind of a cold war. You know, there was the report that China has been trying to prepare to have all kinds of cyber attacks against the infrastructure of the United States. We know they're our enemy. They're our number one enemy in the world. But you have Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea that make up kind of the power block in the East. But then you have the United States, you have Europe, Great Britain, France, Germany, all of these other nations that make up the West. And the West is more powerful than the East. Uh, I believe, you know, right now, if it came down to it. So the East, though, there, there, and I have a question that we're going to answer here in just a minute about China and the 200 million man army in Revelation. But there, there is this growing uh, tension between the West and the East. And exactly what you just said, uh, Sweden becoming a member of NATO, that's a huge deal to Russia. And it really surprises me just a little bit that Turkey voted yes for that because Turkey is so close to Russia. You know, because I, I know it. I know it makes. I know it makes uh, Russia angry that they would support Sweden coming in. Yeah, but you know, we just. I, I just saw the other day. Uh, just there's an article too. Where there's a lot of uh, military sales of arms now going to Turkey from the United States. Uh oh. And so that just kind of came up, and there there was no statement that that was connected to Turkey voting for these. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Turkey approves Sweden. Yeah. or Finland last spring, and now they've approved Sweden. And then there's a little bit of time goes by because, you know, they don't want people to think it's kind of a, you know, a one-to-one. -one. And then all of a sudden you see we're selling Turkey all these arms. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that went into that, oh, I think, oh, to yeah. get Turkey to to agree to that. But they have they were really holding out on Sweden, and Hungary was as well. Uh, but they they it seems like they've both given their approval. But especially Finland, they have a, a border with Russia that's, I mean, hundreds of miles long. And so this is this is infuriating Russia. But again, it's just more of this this setup like you're talking about of the antagonism and, and the, drawing the lines uh, between East and West. We're going to go on the subscriber portion now where we're going to be answering some questions. And we have some really fantastic questions here. We're going to be talking about is the Antichrist Islamic? Is China the 200 million man army in the book of Revelation chapter 9? And some more questions like that. So stay tuned right now for the subscriber only portion. If you're not a subscriber, go to endtimes.com and become a subscriber for $7 a month.
So we have a big lineup and we have coming this year, Max Licato. Max is a dear friend of mine. He is the number one best-selling Christian author of all times. His books have sold more copies than any other books except the Bible. He is a brilliant teacher and he's gonna be teaching. He's written books and speaks on the end times. You're gonna to want to hear him. He's, he's gonna be fascinating. So we've got a great lineup of speakers. I want you to be a part of it. So go right now to conference.endtimes.com. You can select your seat there. We have all different kinds of pricing and, and seats available. And so you need to get it while they're still available because we're expecting this to fill up this year. Go right now to conference.endtimes.com. Wanna see you there.